name is Justin Bradup. This is another episode of Justin's Epic Amazing Reviews. Now, here today we have a TCP Global Paint Coating Thickness Gauge. Now this thing it should be pretty awesome. My guess is that it requires a 9 volt battery, which I'll probably have to stop and go get one. Um, we're going to open this up and see, see what it is. Um, now, I've never used one of these. I've never heard of one of these. I've heard of technology where you use lasers to figure out, you know, the color of stuff and match it, but I've never heard of anything like this. And so, um, my guess is, you know, I know people that like to paint all the time. I'm probably going to give it away as a gift. Um, but this, this is actually a very exciting product for me. I, I, it says it requires some sort of calibration, and I don't know how to do that. So, hopefully I can figure it out. Hopefully I'm able to do it. I don't know if I need like a, a painted piece of metal that I do it with or what. Um, I got other products in here. We'll get out of the way. So I got this uh, super crayon, gel crayons thing we'll look at some other time. Probably next. Okay. Get rid of the box here. Perfect. Okay. Gonna, this thing always gets little cardboard pieces and stuff on it. Alright. So here we go. Um, we got this, this guy here, and let's get it out. Now, this is an interesting case, because usually they're, like, shaped like a gun or something. Um, oh, okay, so here's how you calibrate it. It comes with little paint sample things, and it's got a battery, thank goodness. Thank goodness, thank goodness, thank goodness. Now, let's get a picture of it before I get it all out, because it's never going to look the same once I get it out of here. It looks very similar to a laser temperature infrared, you know, gun thing. And uh, so this looks like I'm going to be able to use it because it came with the paint samples to calibrate it with. And uh, so I'll go out and try it on my car and see what it says, which should be very interesting because I think there's at least like three layers of paint on my Dart, on my Dodge Dart. So this should be very interesting. Okay. Um, so we'll take this out. We'll put the batteries in and we'll read the directions and oh the battery is wrapped in plastic you're gonna need a pocket knife for that i would think Be careful not to cut the battery or short it out there we go okay and this is a go light 9 volt extra heavy duty battery with hg and cd uh zero percent of hg and cd okay so it doesn't have any of it and um yeah so I don't know what's special about this product of Golden Power Corporation LTD. All right, heavy duty battery warning. Battery may explode or leak if recharged or disposed of in fire. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna put this in the gun, and the gun doesn't have a camera on the front of it. It's got this. Maybe you touch it to the paint. Maybe that's how it works because it's got like an electrode on the front. This is weird. Okay, so we're going to put, you know, I would think, you know, people would get more excited about this stuff when I told them I was getting it, you know, but they just, oh, yeah, yeah, I heard of that before. You know, and it's like, come on. Okay, so I put this in here, pull the trigger, and it says two. I don't know what that means. Okay, so how do you turn it off? You just let it sit like most things, and it shuts off. It's got a protective thing on the screen, which is good. Two-in-one coating thickness gauge, um, range zero to 40 milliliters, all this good stuff. Response time is one second. Resolution is 0.1 milliliter. Uh, accuracy plus or minus three percent at one di uh, plus one digits. Uh, nine volt. Nita one six zero four six F twelve zero six P. All right. So let's read the directions because I have no idea what I'm doing, which always makes things exciting. And we've got all of our little chips and paint samples. And come on now, come out. Oh, and a little last thing for some reason. And I'm not going to open any of this until I know what I'm doing. It looks like it's uh, got a thousand ohms of resistance, plus and minus one. I don't know. I don't know what this is. We're going to find out. We're going to read our destructions and instructions, and we're going to see here. Come on now, come out of there. Come out from among them in Jesus' name. See, it always works. Okay. So. Again, we should take a picture. So let's let's do that. Let's uh, put this down here. Put this over here. And 
looks like there's sand on both sides, which is good. This is bare metal. This has got something on it. This is a clear piece of something. Okay, so, like I said, I, I'm going to learn stuff today because I've never used one of these before. I've never heard of one of these before. I don't have any kind of education or advice on this from anyone. Um, so this should be something new. I sure hope whoever gets this appreciates it, though, because I'm sure that this is worth worth some money to somebody. Okay, um, so we got this. It did turn stuff off, thank goodness. Okay, so the gauge, the reference film, 9-volt battery, English manual, product features. Okay, I don't care about all that right now. I want to know how to use it. Where's the... How do I start? Okay, so... LCD's display, okay, it's got all kinds of information, it doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, VI basic, prepared objects to be measured, press and hold trigger button to power on, uh, touch the probe vertically toward the measured surface, I guess while you're holding it down, oh no, press trigger one time when you're doing it, so you just click it, I guess. If the difference is found during operation, perform desired calibration for the refer to instrument calibrating instructions. Okay. Battery installation. Um, okay, we did the battery installation. Power on, check data view. Uh, press the trigger to power on. Auto power off icon will constantly display on LCD without uh, releasing the trigger. LCD will hold full display and the gauge uh, begin. Now, that's a nice thing about this case. It keeps the trigger from being pushed. Um, fully display and the gauge begin working after the trigger is released. The default status is normal. Measuring mode. Please uh, change the battery if the battery icon displays on the LCD. Okay. Um, operating instrument instructions. Uh, so let's test the battery. How about that? We're just going to push this and see if we get... Yeah, battery looks like it's good. And we got two, which I don't know what two means. I'm going to put this down to here just to see what it does. Uh, interesting. They went through the plastic and it says uh, 0016 UM. And I'm not sure what that means. And it says FUR 000F. Or 5. FUR. Whatever that means. Um, and I think it zapped the plastic. I'm not sure what happened there. Okay. Um, measuring mode. Single and continuous. Uh, single measuring mode. Touch the probe vertically against the measured object. Press the trigger one time. And values have been taken. Uh, continuous measuring mode. Touch the probe vertically against the measured object. And the gauge will continuously measure and update the display. Uh, coding thickness measurement. So, here we go. So, it says, uh, after power and default measuring status is zero. With UM unit shown in the LCD. Uh, then place the probe vertically against the measured object. Next, press down the trigger to begin. Finally, LCD display readings. At the end, uh, same time, hold icon, fur, and non-fur icon. Fur for magnetic substrate, iron. Non-ferrous for non-magnetic substrate, aluminum. Uh, reading number for lower part uh, if reading the trigger button. So this uses magnetism and resistance, evidently, to check the thickness of the paint. I'm guessing that's what this does. Because, like I said, it's called a TCP paint coating thickness gauge so okay um so what am i doing here and how do i calibrate backlight display data save it's got all these functions i want to know how to calibrate the thing accuracy substrate thickness there's always critical thickness of substrate uh for measurement critical thickness for this gauge is 0.5 millimeters uh okay uh, C certification, technical specifications. I don't see anything here. I see the unit thing with a light, len on menu, maximum, minimum. Let's try testing something. How about that? Because, like I said, I have no idea what I'm doing. So, let's give this a shot. Let's pull out this sample here with a little coating on it. It's a little scratched. It's got a couple of scratches on it. So touch this to it. Hold the thing down. And it says 2. Is that what it's supposed to do? Oh, there we go. It's doing something different now. Okay, now it says zero non-ferrous is seven. Okay, so it says non-ferrous metal like aluminum. Then it's clicking, which I think it's like discharging something into it. Okay, 
zero zero nine nine ferris. So we'll put that one back in. And let's try the other one. And I don't know if it's Ferris or not. I'd have to put a magnet up to it. And I don't want to do that because it might mess up the test results. Because I don't know what I'm doing. I keep saying that. So this one, I believe, because I tested it before in the bag. And it... Oh, come on. No, the bag doesn't want to open. There we go. I was about to rip the bag. Um, this one came back as Ferris when I did it through the bag. So let's see what it does when I go right up to it. It's not doing anything, but it says it's Ferris. It's, it's 0031 Ferris. I guess the longer you hold it, the different you get. Yeah, the longer you hold it, the higher... Oh, there we go. Now we're getting two readings. I got a 0061 UM and Farad, I got 0098. And it seems like the longer you hold it down, the higher the numbers get. And I don't understand that. So I guess maybe it's because it's not grounding? I don't know. I'm kind of scared to touch it with my finger at the same time. I don't know if I get a zap or what happens with this thing. Okay. Yeah, the fare keeps going up. And there's no UM rating here. So I don't know. Okay, so this one's ferrous. That one's non-ferrous. And then this one is supposed to give me a thousand... It says 1,000 uh, UM plus 1%. So let's, it says OL overload or something, non-ferrous uh, 184. What if I put it like this? Does this do anything? Oh, yeah, now we got something. We got uh, 1,003 UM. I think that's resistance. And ferrous 205. Ferrous 205. Let's try it again. Yeah, now we're getting a constant reading. Okay, I'm going to go out and try this on my car and see what kind of a reading I get on the paint, and I'll come back in and tell you. How's that? Because, I, like I said, i got no idea what I'm doing. So we're going we're gonna to give this a shot and see what it does. All right, so I got a reading of about 200 UMs, whatever that is. And you can change this to Mila, M-I-L, and you get a uh, different reading. Um, but that's what I got on my paint on my car. It was about 200 some UM. And the fair I just kept climbing. And I don't know why that happens. I don't understand it. Um, yeah, there we go. I got 201 UM. Farah 305 is what I got on my car. And the longer I held it down, it just the fair kept going up. So that doesn't mean anything to me. Um, again, I don't know what I'm talking about. So uh, I can't get it to change that doing okay this is like I'm holding down the unit thing and it's resetting the ferret for some reason it's uh it's altering the the uh, numbers for some reason I don't know why I don't know what that's doing I don't know what it thinks it's doing Confusing. Okay. Put it on here and it should read a thousand again just like before. I think I confused it. Ah! I think I confused the machine. And break it! Okay, I'm going to reset because I don't know. There we go. It doesn't like to open. Very easy compared to other guns I'm used to. I'm used to other other guns for other things that just open and close really easy. This one's kind of stiff, so I guess you don't have to worry about falling open. Um, okay, so let's turn it back on. All right, looks like we're back at square one. Okay, let's go to here. Let's go to here first. And it's OL. It's not giving me anything. Let's do it on here. Okay, now we're working. We're at 1,000 UMs, which is 84.7 milliliters, it looks like, M-I-L. And uh, so that that's working. We got our, whoa, we can go to a UM, 
milliliters and um again it would get it to, I don't know why there's a different um okay and if I go over here on the other one I'll probably get a different result anyways I like this product I don't know what I'm doing with it but it appears to be working because the samples the sample products here are giving me correct readings so let's try this again okay so on the the is this the ferrous the non-ferrous this is the ferrous one this is the non-ferrous yeah okay so on the ferrous one I'm getting the 1000 um with the sample uh, slide here on the non-ferrous one I'm getting a different reading I'm getting 880 UMs instead of a thousand so depending on whether it's a ferrous or non-ferrous surface you are going to get a different reading with the test field I guess that's why they sent them to you so that you can you know you know and so anyways there it is so I'm going to take the battery out I'm going to put this thing away and uh I gotta take a selfie with it, but anyways, I, and I haven't figured out how to get the light that's inside here to turn on yet. I've tried it, and I haven't got anything to happen. I hold down the button. Oh, there we go. Now the light's working. Okay, I get a picture of that. I'm gonna put the thing away, and uh, it'll be a Christmas present for somebody. Because, anyways, thanks for watching the video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. It's not that I don't want this product. It's just that I am not. I don't understand everything about it. I don't understand how it works. It would be much uh, better suited to somebody that paints on a more regular basis than me. And someone who could appreciate it better. And and I need good Christmas gifts to give people, you know. And uh, that's that's what this is going to be. It's going to be a really good Christmas gift. And hopefully, the guy that gets it will appreciate it. Thanks for watching the video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And Jesus bless you. Please put the links in the description of the video. And consider cons supporting this channel. Welcome to another episode of Justin's Epic Amazing Reviews. Now, check this out. I've got over 14 packages that I'm supposed to be reviewing. I don't know how I'm going to get them all done today. But look at this. It just The packages, they just keep coming and coming and coming. And I want them to keep coming. So please keep sending your packages. The address is in the description of this video.